look at that wool. Yes, welcome to another vlog. Um, I say another vlog because I've got another one on the go at the moment. So I don't know whether this one's going to go up first, in which case, welcome to my first vlog, or the other one might make it up, in which case, welcome to another vlog. Um, we are in lockdown still in the UK. It is currently Friday the 8th of May and the other project is on hold, uh, but I won't tell you any more about that. You can either go back and watch that video or you can wait patiently for the next one. Um, so this vlog today, um, it's another project that is gonna take me a while to do. Um, another one that I'm really excited um, to track my progress and do a little bit of recording as I'm going. So as you can see from the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the wool, it's very colorful project. And of course, it's another Stephen West project. Um, and if I show you a picture, this is the Mild Mania. Oh, there we go. This is the Mild Mania uh, sweater. So one that we've had uh, lined up for quite a while, but one that I've really struggled to find the right wool for the project for. Um, so when Stephen does the pattern, um, he actually uses off cuts, which um, enables him to get this sort of um, faded effect. Um, now, sadly, I don't have Stephen's back catalogue of off cuts um, or have enough off cuts um, in colours um, that would be suitable for the project. So this is going to be uh, a jumper for Mark um, and he really liked the neon that was um, in the Stephen West. But I said, we didn't have enough offcuts. So project was in the queue for quite a while, 18 months, two years maybe, while we were doing a little search. Um, and then one day I was at a knit club at the Yarn and Yarns uh, knit shop in Penarth, just up the road from us. And I turned around having a chat to Angela the lovely lady that owns the shop, uh, telling her about um, what I was looking for. And she said, I've got something behind the counter. So slightly intrigued, she shuffled off out to the back for me um, and then pulled out this lovely lot, um, which just was a perfect yarn to use for, um, for what we were looking for. Um, so the wool, um, as you can see from the label, comes from Colourful Creativity uh, by Caroline. These are hand dyed um, and I'll put a link in the description box below to uh, Caroline's website. Um, look at these lovely colours. This is a fade set. Uh, so let me just try and arrange them. So they will fade, I believe, this way. So we'll start with this really dark bluey purple into the neon pink, uh, slightly orangey, less pink, a uh, little bit of uh, orange and green, and then into the green and the blue. So with that as a fade going down for the jumper, I think that's gonna be uh, fantastic. Um, it's a merino nylon blend, merino nylon blend. Um, and you actually hold the wool double uh, to get the mild effect. Um, so I've managed to find some merino nylon blend, black and gray. So to go with uh, the colored wool, um, we have some black, uh, standard black uh, fingering yarn, and also the grey. So the jumper starts, if I show the picture again, uh, with this really nice large rib uh, at the top, which is the grey and the black held together. Uh, so this is uh, Ficalana Arweta Classic uh, in the grey, and I said, and then also in the black. So we'll hold these two together to get us going. And then we'll then switch out the black and start to introduce the color, which will continue to hold double with the gray. And the great thing about holding it double with this being a fingering yarn is you actually knit it on a five mil needle. So it's relatively uh, quick to knit up, fingers crossed. Uh, I do get more enjoyment out of starting projects and doing the research than I do finishing them. So I'm hoping the five mil needle will start to see um, a great bit of progress. But it was really fantastic to find this yarn. Um, it's really soft and squishy. And I love the fact that it's um, got the fade within it already. So actually should make it um, kind of perfect for, for what Mark was looking for. Um, the jumper is knit top down. Um, and interestingly, you, uh, if you, again, look at the picture, if you 
hopefully can see the detail. You can see actually here that you're looking at the pearl bumps. Um, so you knit the jumper uh, in the round, but actually when you finish it, you turn it inside out. So what we would usually expect to see is the flat stockinette stitch um, is actually on the inside um, and you get the outer, the, the pearl bumps, um, which is uh, quite quirky, uh, unusual, uh, nice bit of texture. Um, the pattern comes down to the sleeve with thumb holes. Uh, Mark at the moment said he wants thumb holes. Whether that will change as I get towards the end and he'll just want a normal cuff, who knows? But again, we'll see how that um, takes shape over the next couple of weeks. Um, so this video is just going to be really following the progress as I go. I said it's a really interesting project for me, one that I've wanted to make for quite a while. Um, there's going to be a lot of winding, so I'll put a little bit of footage in of doing some of the winding in a moment. Um, all of this needs winding, of course. Um, but actually, because I want the kick the table, because I want the uh, the fade effect to mirror on the sleeves and the body, um, what I'm going to have to do is take one of these skeins, uh, wind this off into uh, a normal ball, and then split that in half. So I've got a half ball for the body, and then the other half ball will be split in half again. That will give me two smaller balls for each of the sleeves and then the plan is that i will continue with the sequence of the color so we'll start with the purple uh move into the neon pink etc and then in theory if i get my measurements right uh we'll have a, a fade that continues down the sleeves and the body roughly in the same gradient um, i'm not sure when i'm going to change color yet um when I get to the body, but we'll we'll have a little play uh, and we'll have a look at that. And then it goes back to the black and the gray then just for a, a simple rib along the bottom. So a bit of measurement, a little bit of maths, I think, probably playing it by ear for color one before we introduce color two and do a bit of a fade effect. Um, but of course, once I've done that for the body, the sleeves should be quite straightforward. Um, so just checking my notes to see if there was anything else I wanted to say to you. And there isn't really. So, um, Introductory video done, um, tick. I can now go and get the wool winder out. Um, I said it's Friday the 8th of May. Uh, in the UK, it's a bank holiday today, delayed uh, May bank holiday because of the VE Day celebration. So I thought what perfect way to spend a bank holiday than starting a new project, um, get a vlog done, get the winders out, get the wool wound. So yeah, watch this space. Okay, so quick update video. We've wound the balls into individual cakes. So I've got five cakes of yarn, which is great. Uh, so then the next step now is to split those five balls in half. And I'm gonna do it all in one go. So I'm gonna do those five into half and then we'll do the next stage. Ducking down on the tripod. 
Et voila! <laughs> Too much in cakes. I was going to say balls. Hmm, cakes. So let's get on with the other four that need doing. Okay, so quick video. We now have five balls of 26, 27 grams each, uh, which is great. Uh, ready for the blend. Uh, so now we're going to do the same thing. So with the other 25 gram ball, I'm going to split that into two lots of 12 or 13 grams. So we've got one each for the sleeves. So that's the next task. Okay, we are finally finished and ready to go with the yarn. Couple of yarn baths. Uh, you can see some of these are slightly neater than others. Uh, I don't know if it's me, my winder, the fact that I'm doing little tiny cakes, but I might roll these little ones into balls to make them a bit more secure. Um, so yeah, we are ready, good to go. Look at those colors. They look so much brighter and more vivid uh, now that they're wound up. So uh, yeah, on to the gray and the black and let's get this thing cast on. Okay, good morning. It is Monday the 11th of May and I just thought I would do a very quick update video. Um, we've just had the bank holiday back to work and I said that I was going to start this project on the bank holiday because it seemed like a, a good one for the three day weekend. So you will have just seen all the footage of all the wool being wound. Um, and this is the sum total of my knitting progress. So these are the first skeins of the black and the gray that I have used. So I've made pretty good progress uh, from, from one ball of each. Obviously held double, which gives this great mild effect. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased. Um, I've done this outside because I think it gives a slightly better view of the colors. Um, but really, um, yeah good progress so here's obviously opening of the neck we're going top down um, and i just love the way these ribs are growing and getting wider um as we go down so cracking little pattern very very quick um so this is probably two days worth of knitting um so i've got uh eight rounds left to go and then we are splitting for the sleeves and on to the colour work. So yeah, absolutely chuffed to bits. Love the mild effect. Love the way that um, everything is completely random. There's no real uh, pattern or pooling um, to the yarn. So it's going to be so warm and squishy. The merino is really soft. Um, so yeah, very, very happy. So uh, I think the next update will be when we've got a bit of colour. Uh, being added in. Okay, so just checking in. It's Tuesday the 12th of May and the progress continues. So yes, we have colour. Look at these awesome blues, neon -y pinks. Um, yeah, the colour match on the camera is pretty good to real life actually. So loving that this is a uh, colour one. So yeah, here we go. Finished item to date. Uh, we have just split for the sleeves, so they have been popped onto some waist yarn. Um, and really interestingly, we've now started the reverse stockinette. Now, I actually thought that I would knit it inside out and then turn it back on itself uh, to finish it. But no, actually, uh, you knit a row um, backwards, effectively, um, which then enables you to just knit every stitch uh, and the reverse stockinette, the pearl bumps appear. So absolutely chuffed to bits, making great progress. Uh, you can see the colors uh, starting here. Obviously that's the reverse, that's the inside. Uh, maybe you'll want to wear it inside out, who knows. Um, but there we go, there's the bumps. So I'm going to try and use the grades uh, the gradient um, every two inches or so and then swap out so the body needs to be approximately 10 inches 
before uh, we do the ribbon um, on the bottom. So five colors, two inches a pop. Uh, we'll do a little fade, couple of rows to fade in between. So I might um, do a little video to show how I'm gonna do that when I get to the next ball. So yes, there we go. Crack in progress and uh, the colored neon yarns are on the needles. So, Sunday the 17th of May, and we have finished the body. I'm so chuffed. It's been a week of knitting um, to get this bit done. Um, quite an addictive pattern. Um, I've really enjoyed it so much. I think because I've been planning it for so long, um, I, now I've actually got it going, I couldn't really stop. Um, so a few other projects have fallen by the wayside, but also, you know, because the yarn's held double, it's on a five mil needle, as I've said before, so it's uh, super quick to get it done. Um, but yeah, so we've got the color changes uh, across the body. Um, switch back then, uh, down a needle size, uh, and then back to the ribbon, um, and then a simple um, I-cord bind off rather than a traditional bind off, which Stephen West loves his eye cord. So I quite like that. I think it gives it a nice little finish. So yeah, um, nothing really to call out. You know, the yarn is self striping as we know. Um, I'll try and go out on the roof with a bit more natural light. I think that might show off the colors a little bit more. They're looking a little subdued in this light, but it is quite windy out there. So uh, I'll see what I can get in a minute. But you can see we've got the little stitch markers here. This is where I was changing colour. So I was basically, I've done two inches of colour. Uh, then I did uh, two rounds of the old colour, uh, the new colour, two rounds of the old colour to do the fade and then brought in the new colour. Uh, and then two inches of colour and then introduced the new colour again and so on and so forth. So I put the little markers in and I'll probably keep these just so that I can see where we are in terms of the sleeves um, to make sure that the colour change uh, carries on down the sleeves. So there we are, absolutely chuffed to bits. So onto the sleeves now, which are exactly the same. So pick up the stitches and off we go. Oh, um, let me just quickly show you the inside, if I can. So obviously, because this is effectively inside out, uh, you can see all the V stitches, which just look fantastic. Um, so if I'm clever with how I sew the ends in, you might be able to wear it inside out um, and get the usual stocking stitch. I might actually do a video, uh, I'll turn it inside out so you can see it properly. But yeah, there we go. On to the sleeves. Oh, wish me luck. Sleeve Island, here we come. Okay, it is Sunday the 31st of May and look what we have here. That's right, we've got a finished object. So 9th of May, I think it was, I cast on. 31st of May, I've cast off and sewn in the ends and I am so, so pleased with the finished item. So um, I've just finished sewing in the ends and I just thought I'd leave it this way a moment before the the big reveal um just to show you the inside really so obviously this is a jumper uh with reverse stocking stitch so you get the pearl bumps on the outer edge of the jumper but this is what your traditional stocking stitch would have looked like where you can see the flat texture um and those little v stitches of the stocking stitch um and I really like it this way round. Um, Mark has said he's not likely to wear it, although I've tried to be as neat as possible sewn in my ends. Um, but that was a bit of an interesting challenge. You can see a couple of the ends there because you usually you sew in and out of the bumps. 
um, whereas you don't have the bumps on, on that side. So I've tried to be as neat as possible, but the thing I think that would stop him wearing it is where you are knitting in the reverse. You can see here that we've got the line where I've gone from the black and the gray into the color. So you can see the reverse of the pearl bumps there. Um, so that gives you that outer edge and that continues all along um, and then down onto the sleeves. So I guess I completely understand the pattern now and, and why you would um, knit it the way that you, um, that the pattern directs, because um, you do get that, that lovely, neat finish on the other side, which you'll see shortly. So yes, there we go. One finished object. And with a seamless transition, there's the finished item. So I've just laid it out on the floor for a moment because I really like the way you can tell through starting at the top and then fading down through the jumper. You can see the time and effort spent up front, splitting all of the arm balls in half and then in half again to give me the body and the sleeves um, has absolutely paid off. You can clearly see that the fade matches um, from the very top, the purples and the blues, all the way down to the greens and the greys at the bottom. Um, let me just show you one of the sleeves. So after we finish the colour transition, we go into this uh, two by two rib um, and there are built in thumb holes and then your hand will stick out the top. Um, so I really like that. And then a very simple and effective I cord edge that just really gives it a nice finish. So you come out of the ribbon and then it just does that lovely little rollover. So it'll be really nice and tight, uh, but without overly gripping. Um, so a really long cuff to take into account of the built-in hand warmer and quite a, an unusual, um, is it unusual? Yeah, I guess it is quite an unusual feature to have um, on the end of a jumper. Um, I cord edge on the bottom, um, of the main body as well, which is again, as I said, great, um, and will will help the jumper really keep its shape. And then I guess if I can try, the light is really sunny here today, um, so I'm trying to film where I think will give the best light. But if I just kind of hold it and try and just bring it up, you can absolutely see those lovely pearl bumps, the reverse stitch, and then we've got the blues, the pinks, the purples into the pinks and the oranges, then the oranges into the yellows, the yellows into the greens, and then the greens into the, the blues and the teals. So it's absolutely fantastic to have been able to complete this item um, and use the fade set um, as designed by Caroline of Colourful Creativity. The wool is fantastic um, and hopefully, you know, it's a merino nylon blend. So it's got 25% nylon in it. Uh, which would usually mean that, you know, it's fantastic for socks, very hard wearing, but equally it's machine washable. So I'm hoping this is going to be a firm favourite uh, of Mark's in the future. Um, if I just talk about this very top edge in, uh, you can see where you've got a really clean transition then from the ribbon here straight into the colour work. If you remember the video just before this, you could see the line where I changed the colour. So really love that. So that's it. Um, I'll talk in a moment about the wall that I've got left. Um, obviously, I should try and get some footage. Um, I've not asked Mark if he will try it on and appear in the video. Uh, if he won't, uh, I'll insert a couple of photographs. Um, we are having a um, ridiculously unseasonal heat wave here in the UK. Um, so it is currently a balmy... 20 plus degrees so it's not really wool wear look at me trying to check this from behind the camera uh it's not really weather for woolens um but if i can convince him perhaps a little bit later on when it cools down to pop it on um i will do so so there may be some footage coming up of mark wearing it there may not be and there may just be a couple of uh still photos but yeah absolutely pleased um, chuffed to bits with it. Um, so let me um, stop this mini segment and uh, let me go and grab the leftover yarn that I've got. So I have finally got Mark in the jumper and uh, he's agreed that I can film him as long as I don't go over the top. I don't know what he means. Catalog pose, obviously. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Hope you like the final object. I love it. 
Hey, look at that. Mark, what do you think? Hi. Do you like my sweater? <laughs> do you like your sweater? That's the most important question. I love my sweater. And look, thumbs as well. Eek, look at that. Awesome. Is it nice and warm? It's lovely, snug, very warm. Very warm. And what do you think of the fade? The fade is just lovely. I'm pretty pleased. It's very well matched. And very pattern matched. Very pattern matched. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, any other comments? No, it's lovely. I don't know how I'm going to reuse my watch though. <laughs> so is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Thumbs up. Okay, so I've grabbed the rest of the yarn that I've got left over. Um, so I've got almost nothing grams of black left. Um, and I don't know, I'm totally guessing three or four grams um, of the grey uh, from where I finished the, the final sleeve. But I've also got two whole balls left over. Um, and I often find this with Stephen's patterns. Um, I don't swatch. My grandfather didn't do it. Maybe that's why I don't. I don't know. Occasionally, I will do a little swatch if I need to check something. There was a, a cushion project I made recently, and I wanted to block it because it was in Taja colour work, and um, the ends were curling because so it was going to be a cushion. But I blocked that, um, and I did a swatch because I wanted to make sure if the colour didn't run um, the red into the white. But unless I've got a specific purpose like that, I don't tend to swatch touch wood uh, I tend to be neither too loose nor too tight my tension always seems to work out and certainly projects I make for Mark fit like a glove um, so I don't tend to do um, swatches to see if I'm um, too tight on my tension which could account for the fact that I've got some wool left over um, but I tend to find this with Stephen's patterns and of course um, you need to make a pattern for all eventualities um, but on uh, a few other projects I've made of Stevens, I do have quite a lot of wool left over. Um, so these will um, go into stash, generic black sock yarn will be used for, for something. I've already got a project in mind for the next gray, uh, which we will come on to now because um, the wool that we used um, is, uh, as I've said right at the very beginning, is by the lovely Caroline of Colourful Creativity. Um, and this was the five skein set, as you saw, this was 250 grams, so five 50 gram skeins. But if I pick up what I've got left, look at all that yarn. So what I've done is I've taken the offcuts of the individual balls, one each for the sleeves and one for the body, and I've wound them back into bigger cakes because it's a bit easier to manage that in storage. Um, and I weighed in, obviously starting with 250 grams, I've actually got 160 grams left, which is fantastic. So actually that project, um, if you're looking for a stash buster, um, you really, really don't need a lot of yarn to be able to make that jumper. You know, it's very much um, the mild effect um, holding any offcuts of colour uh, with a corresponding grey or white perhaps would be quite nice. Um, but yeah, I've got quite a lot of yarn left. I've got pretty much a whole cake of this final colour because where we were in the pattern with the length, actually by the time I got this colour um, into the body, I only needed to do an inch before I started the ribbon. A um, little bit longer on the sleeves, but really have used very little of this final colour. Um, and the rest of them are obviously pretty even. So with 160 grams left, um, I've already decided on my next project, um, I will need to buy some more grey. Um, but on the fact that these are designed to be used together with a lovely fade, as we've seen in the jumper, um, Stephen had a new pattern out, um, I think it was the end of last year, called the Painting Bricks Shawl. Um, I'll try and pop a quick picture in here, um, but these are going to be fantastic. So we have a Mild Mania sweater that is uh, fantastic colours using that gradient. I'm going to do a Mild Mania style uh, shawl. So we'll use the block grey. Um, I won't mar the colours again, but I'm, um, it's sock yarn um, in the pattern, which is perfect. And it means that I get to use the rest of this wool because now I've got um, 160 grams of this left. I've done a quick calculation and um, in metres, I've got about 650 and in yards, about 700. The pattern calls for 600 
something. It's either yards or meters um, of contrast color. Um, so either way, I've got enough of this. I don't think I'll need to buy any additional yarn, but it does mean I get to use this fantastic color set from Caroline um, in another project. Um, I'd actually think the shawl I'd probably wear, a lovely little uh, gray style shawl um, with those colors, again, fading out from the, the blues to the pinks to the orange. I think that's gonna look great. Um, so yeah, a lot of wool left, but absolutely, if you're interested in making this jumper, um, I would thoroughly recommend the pattern. Um, it's pretty simple to get your head around. There's a couple of bits where you turn the jumper inside out, you knit the wrong way. Took me a while to get my head around it on the body, but actually you then think, oh yeah, actually that's quite logical. Um, so yeah, really great, um, simple pattern. I'm gonna stop holding these now because yeah um so i would absolutely recommend that pattern um and i said you know mark is really pleased with this um it's the extra small size so for mine i said i used um i've got 160 grams left so i've used about 90 grams um in total so if you've got a little bit of sock yarn in your stash um you just need a contrast color to bring it with um but absolutely get it done so there we go the extra small is definitely not going to fit me. Um, so that's it. I think that's going to be my final video. Um, so thank you very much for sticking with me. I've recorded um, at different segments as I'm going along, and I have no idea how long this is going to be. Um, my personal preference is no longer than 30 to 40 minutes if I'm sitting down to watch a vlog. Um, so I promise it won't be any longer than 40 minutes. So if you've been sitting here for the full 40, thank you for sticking with me. Um, I mentioned earlier on in one of the other segments that this could be the first or the second uh, proper project video that I'm going to put up. It's definitely going to be the first. I've made this jumper in about three weeks. So I just need some time to edit this footage together now. But, you know, we're three weeks later. Um, We've been in the lockdown in the UK for 10 weeks now with the coronavirus. My first project, um, which I hoped would have been the first video on my jumper project, um, is in quarantine, waiting for me to be able to go and see um, Jenny at Ammonite Yarns for a bit of pattern support. So there will be a video come in with some stick in. Let's cut on it and it's all going to be fine. Um, so yeah, so thank you very much. Please leave me a comment below if you found this interesting. Like, subscribe, do all the usual YouTube things. Um, you hopefully would have seen some lovely footage of Mark wearing the jumper. Bit of a modelling striker pose. If he's not up for that, I'll have inserted a couple of videos so you can see it. And I'll link in the description box below to my Ravelry page so you can see the proper photos. Um, you know, I'm doing these videos as a way to... Uh, almost like a little diary for me about my projects as I've been making them, but to try and go a bit more in depth than um, than a usual written blog. But I will do a written blog that goes with this as well, and I don't know whether I'll get that up before or after the video, but I'll pop the uh, I'll update the description box when that's available. So thank you very much for sticking with me. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, and until next time, who knows what that project's going to be. I've got loads of things that I want to make. Um, until we speak again, happy crafting.